Hello everybody, I am Keaton and this is Kid Catholic Season 9, Episode 2. And for today's topic, I want to do something that I haven't done in a while, and that is a movie review. Because I absolutely love supporting not just Catholic, but any Christian uh, movie, whether it's Protestant, Catholic, whatever it may be, because they're so necessary right now in Hollywood. When we see what's going on in Hollywood, when we see what's going on in the world today, this culture of sin, this culture of uh, anti-Christianity that's being pushed, we need these Catholic, these Christian these these Jesus movies coming out. And so I wanted to do a movie review on the movie Fatima that recently came out virtually uh, via Amazon Prime. Now, the movie Fatima obviously portrays sort of a more realistic version on what happened on what is known as the Day of the Sundance, right? When you have uh, the three children, uh, Francesco, Lucia, and Jacinta, who witnessed an absolutely incredible miracle, had Mary appear to them multiple times in sort of a realistic journey of what it was like back then um, and what what sort of it took. It, it almost reminded me a little bit of The Passion because The Passion was like probably the most realistic storytelling of Jesus' crucifixion that we've seen on screen. Um, obviously, like it's not like that in subject matter. Like The Passion is heavy and, and dark and violent and it's truly a, a great portrayal um whereas this obviously it's not as i mean it's not all rainbows and butterflies but it's not as like gruesome as that i'm just saying it's it's similar when it comes to realism except for in this one they actually spoke english which was nice i will say the acting in this movie especially from the kids is like it's amazing i absolutely loved it um so let's dive right into it so the beginning of the movie basically starts off with sort of explaining how World War One is going on right then in Portugal um, and sort of taking a look into uh, Lucia specifically, who this movie specifically focuses on into her life. But it doesn't just start out that way. Something that I love about this movie, it sort of cuts back and forth between the future and the past. It starts with a man going to interview the real Lucia, who obviously was an actor in this movie, but there was the real Lucia living around that time. I believe it was in the 1990s that we saw in the movie Fatima. And it starts out with him going to her to interview her about her witness, about her account, about what she saw. Now, the thing about him, though, is he is not a believer. He does not believe that she actually, like, that that's what actually happened in Fatima. And so you get this sort of dialogue between them of Lucia, the nun, the old nun in the 90s, talking to this man who's going to interview her uh, to write a book. And then she, Lucia starts explaining her story, and it takes us back to uh, those days in Fatima. Now, I absolutely love the acting of the kids in this movie. Like, I think that's my one of my favorite parts. Is because, like, I mean, I know that when talking about, like, a Catholic Christian movie, the number one thing that I'm not going to sit here and talk about is acting. But when you, like, have... Uh, a movie as heavy as this and you have child actors sometimes it can really really fail in this movie it did not fail at all it was absolutely beautiful absolutely amazing uh when it comes to mary's first appearances to the kids and and how they portrayed francesco not being able to hear um mary was was like awesome and it sort of made you in the moment i just i don't know how to describe you Bas basically i love this movie it put you as if it was in the time period um, and it's not like one to sit down in an action adventure movie. It is, uh, uh, fairly realistic. Obviously, it doesn't have everything 100% because no movie does. But it is a fairly realistic, uh, showing of what actually happened back in 1917 in Fatima. Now, what this movie focuses on that I absolutely love was the scrutiny that the kids went through, um, when talking about how Mary appeared to them. Not just the scrutiny, but specifically the scrutiny that Lucia went through. Um, because, Everybody at the time thought they are completely lying. They are complete liars. In fact, we see in the movie, nobody even gave them a chance. Um, Lucia, who was nine at the time, was the oldest of the three. Francesco was said that he couldn't even hear Mary. And then Jacinta was too young. So everybody basically put the blame on Lucia. Uh, in the movie, at least, right? And we see this throughout the movie, how everybody's just blaming Lucia for, for everything because a lot of negative things happen as a result of the children continuing this quote-unquote lie, uh, despite those around them not knowing that they're telling the truth. We literally see Lucia being pushed by the archbishop, by a cardinal, by the, by the local priest, right? By the people. We see her being pushed to admit, you're lying about seeing Mary. You're lying about seeing Mary. Almost to the point where we see it sort of gets to where... Um, 
they almost convince her that she just saw something, that it wasn't really Mary, right? They almost convince her, like, no, it was a lie. You didn't actually see Mary. Even to the degree of Lucia being locked up, because where Lucia, Francesco, and Jacinta were seeing Mary, in the movie it's portrayed, right? It's it's portrayed wonderfully how, I mean, I just, I know I've said that multiple times, but it really is. Um, we see in the movie that, like, the land that they're seeing Mary on is someone else's land, and so people show up. Uh, to where the children are. They're like a ton of people show up time and time again to see Mary, to witness this miracle. And it destroys this farmer's crops. It destroys this farmer's food, the food for the winter. As a result, the family has to give him the food for the winter. As a result, Lu Lucia's family is going hungry for the winter because of what she's claiming of seeing Mary, which is just absolutely crazy. So how it is, is when the people come to see the the appearance of Mary, you have Francesco, uh, Lucia, and Jacinta all kneeling in front of her, um, but the other people can't see anything. And so when you're sort of with back behind with the other people, you don't see Mary. And then when like the camera closes in on them, you see Mary. And then the actress who portrayed Mary was, I mean, again, wonderful. Like, the acting in this, I think, is one of my favorite parts. I know I've said that. It also dives into some other elements of Lucia's life. Um, like her older brother, who was at war um, during World War One, and it's actually shown that, like, the people and the townspeople would sit there and say, announce who died in war. And so every time, Lucia and her mother would go and listen to see if her older brother survived. Um, and eventually, it is announced that he was missing, considered dead and then later on in the movie she the lucia's mom gets a letter from uh the sun anyway there's like a lot more to it besides just oh the sun dancing in the sky right is what i'm trying to get at you go through the kid's life how their life was affected how literally uh we see in the movie townspeople yelled at lucia's mother like you must be ashamed to have a daughter like her because everybody thought they were lying their kids claiming to see mary like i have a brother who's nine and i uh can't imagine him like going through that sort of scrutiny like Lucia did right like Lucia was viciously uh, attacked uh, even by her own mother for claiming to see the Virgin Mary but she wouldn't give in she said no it is the truth and sort of so this whole movie you have sort of this build-up of the other people in Lucia Jacinta and Francesco's lives going well are they telling the truth are they lying and you have sort of this conflict this drama the whole time trying to have them get tested by child psychologists to see if they're telling the truth or not, right? And then it leads up to this amazing moment at the end where you have everybody standing, waiting there for Mary's appearance, and then we see the sun dance. And the way that this is portrayed in the movie is absolutely incredible. The uh, It shows the different colors in the sun. It shows the sun move around. And then what we actually know is that the sun was hurtling toward the earth at vicious speeds, right? And it looked like the world was ending. Um, and this is portrayed in the movie as well, and it is absolutely incredible. What is also um, shown very well is Mary showing hell to the children. They included that in the movie, which I was sort of afraid that, like, oh, if that would be too scary, they would have taken it out. But I, I, I was scared they were going to do that because I don't think that that's a part that you can take out. I think that that's such a big part of their story. Showing what happens in the war uh, shows Mary's predictions of, oh, well, this is going to happen if people don't start praying. There's going to be a war that's worse, which ends up being World War II. Um, and so they included all that in the film, and it absolutely just, like, topped it off. I absolutely loved the, the, the showing of that and the faces of Lucia, Francesco, and Jacinta when they're witnessing that. I mean, it's ultimately, like, the thing is, what when watching the movie, we all know the story of Fatima. We all know the day that Sundance. So when watching the movie, you know that it's going to happen. Like, you know that the, oh, the sun's going to move around at some point, right? You know that that miracle is going to occur. And yet, it still is a very triumphant, exciting moment. Because this whole movie, you have Lucia, Jacinta, and Francesco going, guys, we are telling the truth. Mary did appear to us. This is the truth. This is actually the truth. And then you have everybody around them going, you're lying you're terrible we're gonna lock up lucia we're gonna tell you all that you are lying you're horrible look at what you've done to us you're, you're just complete liars and then when you have the sun coming up and dancing it's sort of like a not sort of it basically is a ha ha we told you so moment for these kids right and that triumphant victory of yes we, we are telling the truth mary appeared to us but again occasionally it flashes back forward to uh none lucia talking to this man who's writing the book, and he tries to disprove everything he's saying. He's like, well, how come this happens in visions? Tries, tries to name, like, contradictions in the Catholic Church, or tries to prove, quote-unquote prove, that she didn't actually see what she saw, and Lucia just 
comes back with everything he has to say and it's absolutely incredible at the end it talks about like what happened to Jacinta and Francesco how they were uh which they, how they died just one year after the son dance and Lucia remained al alive for many years until the year I was born um, which is crazy to think about that it, like I was alive at the same time as her anyway um yeah so it's it's an incredible movie I 10 out of 10 would recommend the movie can get slow in some parts it can kind of drag on a little bit but again I think that if you're wanting to watch just an action movie to be entertained the whole time this isn't it and it really shouldn't be it because yeah it's slow in some parts but that's also the true depiction of what happened right so I don't think you can really fault the movie um, for that because it continues on with Mary's continued operations up until that that ending sort of triumphant moment again like the day uh, uh, the Sundance. So I would recommend you check it out. It is on Amazon Prime currently um, for rent. Uh, it is an incredible movie. And like I said, I think that we all should go buy it, watch it, because it's so important that we support these Catholic movies so that they can continue to happen, right? Because we need that in today's world and we need that in Hollywood. And Fatima does an excellent job of portraying what happened accurately um, while having an entertaining movie at the same time. So, now that the topic is done, do you all know what it's time for now? It's time for... The Saint of the Week! And today's Saint of the Week is, you guessed it, three in one, Saint uh, Lucia, Saint Francesco, and Saint uh, Jacinta. Now, Saint Francesco and Saint Jacinta took a little longer for them to be canonized. They were just canonized recently in 2017 by Pope Francis. Uh, St. Lucia obviously canonized recently as well, but she was canonized much short, shorter after her death than St. Jacinta and St. Francesco because they died in 1918, just a year after Mary appeared to them, um, and Pope Francis canonized them in 2017. Anyway, uh, yeah, their stories are absolutely incredible, and because I just sort of explained their story for the video, I instead would like to focus on the scrutiny that they went through and how we overcame it because... Um, there's something in this movie where, uh, I, I, I didn't mention it in the topic intentionally because I thought that it'd be very important to include in the state of the week, where, um, because of St. Lucia, St. Jacinta, and St. Francesco's story, they end up closing down the church. I, I said it was bad, right? I said a lot of negative things happened because of it. They ended up closing down the church. Now, uh, I feel like in today's society, we can relate to churches being unlawfully and unfairly closed down for not uh, not very smart reasons and for reasons to where uh, we should still be allowed to worship um, and take all the precautions necessary but still be allowed to worship, right? So at the time when the church shut down, they experienced that, right? They experienced that, except imagine for a second. Your local church shuts down, but everybody knows that it's because of you, that it's your fault. That would be a lot of pressure, right? Now imagine enduring that when you're nine years old. That's what they had to go through, right? St. Lucia specifically was nine years old, the oldest of the three. They went through so much and were scrutinized constantly. We're told that they were liars, had their parents yelled at. Lucia's mom was told in the movie, right? And, and again, whether it was word for word in real life, we don't know, probably not, but they were scrutinized in real life. In the movie, we see Lucia's mom being told... Um, like, you should be ashamed to have a daughter like that, right? And that's just, we, we, as Christians in modern society, can relate to being scrutinized against, can relate to sort of that feeling of being tormented. And so anytime we are struggling with that, we can look through those three, St. Lucia, St. Francesco, and St. Jacinta for help. So, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Before you click off this video, really quickly, it would mean so much if you could just quickly, easily click the right subscribe button down below. Uh, it's free. All If it says you can't, all you need to do is set up an account for free and it really helps support this ministry. So I would really appreciate it if you did so. If you already are, if you would please uh, just just text the link to this video to friends, family, whoever you may know. Get the word out about Kid Catholic because it really does help support this ministry. And if you want to go to kidcatholic.com as well, there's so many awesome things you can do on there. You can read about me, contact me, make a donation to the ministry, uh, buy your very own Kid Catholic t-shirt, uh, 
mess, email me for speaking engagements, right? There's so many awesome things you can do on there. So please go check that out. That's kidcatholic.com. Please check out three of my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The link to all three of those will be in the description and in the comments below. Also, please comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have. Thank you all so much for watching. This was Keaton of Good Catholic. I'll see you all next week. And hi, Brielle. Thank <laughs> you.